EBITDA stands for earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. Now, what are earnings? Earnings are net income, which means revenue less expenses. Let's take a look at our example income statement, net income, which is really the final earnings of this business, right? So this 3 million reflects the difference of all the revenues and expenses. And this is the net profit that the company made. So you start with the net income. Now included in this number is interest expense or income and income tax expenses. These have already been included or considered when you arrive at the net income. So if you have an interest expense, that would be deducted from your profit to arrive at the net income. If you have interest income, that would be added to your profit. Similarly, if you have income tax expense, that is already deducted from your revenues or income. Then you arrive at the net income. Now for EBITDA, which is earnings before interest tax, depreciation and amortization, we exclude interest and income tax, or in other words, we say we add them back to our net income, and we also exclude depreciation. And depreciation could be in multiple places within this income statement. So it could be part of the cost of sales here. It could be included in the selling and advertising and general admin expenses. So we add them all up, and then we take the sum of the total depreciation and add it back to our income. So you see our net income was 3 million for the year 2021 but we added back interest and tax expenses, 547, and then the depreciation amount is $1.3 million roughly. So we arrive at, finally, our EBITDA. Interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization are excluded. But why are they excluded? Well, this is because none of them truly reflects the operational performance. For example, Interest depends on the borrowing and lending structure, not the operational performance. It does not have much to do with the business itself, but what are the funding needs of the organization. Similarly, tax depends on company's profit, but also the applicable tax regulations. So a similar company in two completely different regions or countries may have different tax expenses. So it does not really reflect the operational performance or business performance. Depreciation and amortization are non-cash expenses and really reflect allocation of capital or intangible expenditure that has already incurred. Often these expenses are incurred in the past. So you may have an asset that was purchased 10 years ago and you're still allocating the cost of that asset in the income statement. That's why depreciation and amortization are also excluded. So EBITDA is a metric that measures a company's operational performance, excluding non-operating expenses such as interest tax, depreciation, and amortization. EBITDA can be used to compare operational performance but has its limitations, which we will discuss in a separate section. The next question is who uses EBITDA? Well, EBITDA is particularly important in industries with high levels of debts or that require significant capital expenditures. For example, manufacturing, energy, and telecommunication. The high levels of debt and depreciation expense make it difficult to compare profitability across different companies within these industries. And using a metric such as net income does not help because it includes expenses such as depreciation, amortization, interest, and taxes. But frankly, EBITDA is used by a wide range of stakeholders and across the board. For example, investors, lenders, analysts, and management. They all use EBITDA. Investors use it to make investment decisions, lenders for lending decisions, analysts and management to understand and compare the profitability of the business and setting targets for future years. From my personal experience in the corporate world, almost every organization that I've worked with uses EBITDA as a management reporting tool. And really the key KPI that is discussed during management meetings and is set as target for future years and even for bonus or compensation calculations. If you go to a finance website like Yahoo Finance and just type the ticker symbol of any famous company, let's take Apple for example, and you click on it and it brings up this information for you. And if you click on financials, you'll see the first financial here is income statement. Scroll all the way to the bottom. What do you find here? EBITDA. This is available for almost all the companies that are listed on the stock exchange. So it is quite a frequently used common KPI for income statement performance. The problem, however, is it's not easy to answer all the questions, especially when it gets into price volume mix and the percentage changes, the EBITDA percentage change. Let's also take a look at EBITDA percent, also known as EBITDA margin. 
EBITDA percent is a financial metric or a calculation which just shows EBITDA as a percentage of its total revenue. So the calculation or formula is EBITDA divided by total revenue times 100. It's reflected in percentage terms. Total revenue is often indicated by gross sales less any sales deductions. EBITDA percent or EBITDA margin is used to compare a company's profitability over periods and among its competitors, it's similar to gross margin or gross profit percent, except that in gross margin, you have gross profit divided by total revenue. In case of EBITDA percent, it's the EBITDA divided by total revenue. In the income statement, the EBITDA percentage would be reflected like this. So for our bowl bags, Inc. example, you can see 2021 EBITDA percentage was 32.3 and it dropped to 31.8% for 2022. And compared to budget, it is also below target. Budget was set at 34.1%. So this is something we'll be looking at in detail, uh, doing all the calculations and analyzing the performance. So now we are ready to start creating the waterfall chart for this income statement, which basically is a bridge for EBITDA change between current year, which is the year ended 2022, versus last year which is 2021 and we'll also create a waterfall chart for 22 versus budget 22 so we will have two waterfall chart you probably have experience of this in your work life as well usually the most common comparisons we see anytime we are looking at an income statement is versus prior year same period and versus budget or target right so we'll create these two and i'll also show you how you can use the analysis that we do to create basically a comparison or waterfall chart between current year and any other benchmark or any other base. First part we will focus on, which is the most important part as well and probably takes the most time, is from gross sales to gross margin. Okay, This first portion, this takes most of the work and this is where most of the analysis is as well. So we'll start dealing with this now and in the next few videos you will see how we create Excel files that are automated to calculate the variances for us and also automated to create the waterfall chart for us. So let's get right into it. Hope you are excited.